Hi guys and welcome back to Airways Air Sports. Um, welcome to part two of how to de-rig and rig a flex wing. And so in the first video that you uh, hopefully have seen, um, which should be uh, on our YouTube channel, uh, we're going to be now looking at taking a flex wing uh, microlight or an ultralight microlight from a fully de-rigged situation, we're just taking it off the trailer and going through the process of rigging it so that we can go flying on that day. We're also gonna look at some of the inspections as we go along, and certainly some key things that we want to take note of to make sure that we don't damage our aircraft in the process. Thanks for watching, guys. We hope you enjoy the video. So we are now looking on how to rig our flex wing uh, so that we can go for a flight. There are a number of things that we need to do, the first of which is obviously consulting the operating manual. There is a full section there on point by point on how to rig a flex wing. Um, it's worth photocopying those and laminating them and keeping them with your trike because you might not have your pilot operating handbook with you uh, when you most need it. So there are certainly bits that you want to go through. There are a certain a number of checks that we need to do as we go through the rigging process to make sure that our aircraft is flyable. Flexwing microlights were designed to be de-rigged, so there are a number of parts that you just can't get to once the aircraft is rigged. So certainly uh, reading your operating manual to see what those specific parts are so that you can do those uh, pre-flight checks uh, before you're uh, going to be airborne. One of the things we need to take into consideration um, is the wind direction, where is the wind coming from, and certainly have I got a usable area uh, in order to rig this wing in the first place. I would say that you would need a good 10 foot uh, in front of the trike to rig the wing. Um, so for me, probably a good wing bag length uh, so that we can get this, air, uh, this wing out of its bag. What I'm doing now is I'm opening out the A-frame and just checking that the flying wires are in the correct orientation so they don't get snagged or the wrong side of the bar. This is where you just open it out gently and just move these wires just so you can see where they are in relationship to the A-frame and again checking the flying wires that they are the right side of the bar. These should be to the outside and try not getting the wire wrapped around the base bar uh, as you rig it. You're just checking that they are free. I've already assembled one side of the A-frame. What I need to do now is connect this side uh, to this side. So don't force it through, don't try and use uh, particularly anything uh, hard or screwdriver or spanners to try and push it in. Certainly don't hammer it in place. Uh, again, any restrictions you want to feel. So what we're gonna do first of all is line up the training bar hole with the base bar uh, hole. And then we can look at bringing in the A-frame and lining those holes up all together. Again, my force of habit, I always put the bolts where I need to need them. Worth remembering that these bolts come in from the bottom so that you can see the wing nut on the top and the tank. So when you're sitting in your aircraft and you're inspecting, that's one of the things that you're looking for. Start off easily with one side and just gently feed that bolt through through the other side. Slight movements up and down should mean that that bolt will eventually pop through on the other side. And again, this is where a bit of AC50 uh, as part of your pre-flight checks becomes very, very useful. And we can push this through and so that we can get it all bolted up. Once that wing nut is in place, there should be just a tang to insert. And that's our base bar set and we're ready to roll over the wing. The A-frame is going to get in the way, so what we need to do is move the A-frame now closer into the wing so that we can roll uh, this wing onto its front. Once we're in this position, what we can use is the bag to help us roll. Rolling it onto its side. These wires are obviously going to offer some form of restriction 
I'm using my leg to stop this from rolling out and I'm using the A-frame to roll the wing back down now onto the floor. Next thing we need to do is to assemble the king post. Now, depending on your wing uh, manufacturer and, and design, the king post will be assembled in a number of different ways. Please do um, inspect your operating, uh, pilot operating handbook for the correct procedure on how to assemble your king post. An important thing to worth remembering is once this is under tension, um, the king post is holding a lot of weight. So there is a spigot a, uh, a little uh, bracket that's down here that you want to make sure it's engaged in. Near on impossible uh, to rectify once the aircraft, uh, the wing is under tension. So in this scenario, the flying wires or landing wires um, and luff lines are a separate block. The king post comes back in. We push down to engage the spigot. Oh. I have an aerial issue. Back into its block. Pop in the uh, flying and landing wires. Assembling cables. And on this design, bringing us now back to the over center catch. I don't tend to do this at this point, but the over center catch would just come along and lock in place. With the king post now in place, I can start to unroll the wings. And as I'm doing this, I'm checking the condition of things like the buckles, uh, certainly on straps, and certainly checking for any creases or any damage to the wing around high wear areas, particularly around washout rods where it may be in contact with uh, any bracketry, and really just start getting my first eyes on the state of this wing. Once these wings have spread out here a little bit like a, a paper aeroplane, you can see the splay of um, the luff lines and of the landing wires, making sure that again there's no damage. It's a lot harder to see this when it's up on the trike, so paying particularly attention uh, that everything is in place, there are no cracks, there are no signs of fraying uh, or fatigue. Uh, and certainly might be a good time to give it a, a wipe down and a clean. Once we're in this position, we can slowly start opening the wings out and slowly start increasing the tension on the wing and we can get some battens in and get some form uh, to make it look a lot more like a flex wing. Now I've opened the wings out slightly, it means I can get my first glance at checking that I have the wires in the right orientation. Obviously we have the two wing wires that go out to the leading edges. We want to make sure that these aren't wrapped around the uh, A-frame uprights and certainly in the correct orientation with the base bar. Just work these back towards uh, the tail. I'm checking that the rear flying wires aren't snagged around the training bars and again aren't looped around the base bar and again checking that the nose wire which we'll need uh, is in the right position and in a place where we can get it so in between the A uh, of the A-frame and I'll check that on both sides. The reason we're doing this now is we're going to start slowly opening the wings out meaning the wires are slowly going to get put under tension and the last thing you want to be doing on a uh, perfectly flyable day is crawling under your wing to discover that you've made a mistake that you could have resolved earlier. my batten bag here, what I'm going to do is slowly start identifying the battens that I need. So, they are colour coded, red is port or red is not right is the way that I remember it. Now looking at bringing these battens out, just checking the bag, making sure there's no small ones that are 
hiding in the bottom of the bag. And the first thing I'm going to do is separate the straight ones from the cambered ones. These are lower surface battens and these are upper surface battens. On this wing, there's only three of those, so I shall put those together. And the next thing I'm looking at is separating the root uh, battens from the tip battens. You can see the ends of these on this particular wing have a, uh, uh, a shaft. Again, these are going to be longer, so I can look at positioning those in the right position and putting them near to where I'm going to be working. Now, if you've been clever enough, or someone's been kind enough previously, all the battens will be numbered. And it's a lot easier to go from the root to be one out to the tip. An easier way of doing this as well is to get the camber right. And looking at the tips, you'll see which one is longer uh, compared to the shorter one. Okay, so now we've identified all of the battens. I've had full OCD and laid them out um, either side of the wing. You can see that I've generated myself a work area. I don't want to tread on any of these tips or any of these battens. It's certainly worth inspecting these battens as they go in. You could even go as far as doing a batten profile to make sure that the camber is right. It's certainly part um, of the inspection process. But one thing that I've been left over with is this one batten that's an even bigger camber. This is the nose batten and we're going to put this in first. Now the nose batten can be quite difficult um, to install. So pick your battles. We want to make sure that the wing is under very little tension. Even if you push the wing's tips out, it can put the wing under tension. We certainly want to make sure that the over center catch on the rear fin is disconnected. And again, it makes this area nice and squidgy so that we can get this nose batten in. We are looking and trying to find the batten pocket which runs through this seam that's there. Now in order to do this, there's two ways that you can do this. You can pop your knee under there to generate a bit more space, but I start with this at 180 degrees and slowly start working it in. So hopefully this will work out. Identify the pocket. Now when I'm putting this batten in, as with all of the battens, I don't want to be just pushing this hard uh, until it eventually goes home and literally feeling any restraints. Now as this is going in, I'm slowly rotating this batten so that we are now 180 degrees around. If you do feel any restrictions, just have felt a little bit of a restriction there, a little bit of a waggle, it might just be a crease as it was. Let's get that batten a little bit closer. Try not to rub this batten against the, uh, uh, the wing uh, bracket. Get it a little bit closer each time. So it eventually comes home. There is a lanyard here, and what we need to do is pull on this so that we can locate it onto its located screw. Now, you can damage the wing when putting these battens in, so it's again following the golden rule of don't force it. Feeling restrictions, stop and investigate. You want to locate the batten pocket, make sure that it's open, make sure you're getting the cambered end and that you're getting the right batten. Slowly insert and gently push. Don't try to ram it home straight away. Gently bringing in the batten, feeling any restrictions and just gently pushing in with palm pressure. When you get to about the point where it feels like it's in, using the bungee that comes on the underside, just pop it on place. Don't bring in the second bungee if you're using double bungees. Just popped on the, uh, on the lower bungee. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way down, slowly inserting the battens before we can start tensioning the wing. All we need to do now is insert the lower flying battens. I've already done that side, but it'd be worth showing you that there are two sides. So here you can see there is an angle on this one. This one needs to be facing up. So this would be the lower surface and this would be the upper surface. The reason being is on the other side, there is an angle down and this would be, the wing surface would be here so that you can get the bungee to hold the lower battens in place. It's also worth looking to make sure that they are straight.
And if there is a slight bend, can you see this one there? Locate the bend and light pressure. Just to straighten that tube out. What happens is the floating cross tube, uh, particularly on a heavy landing, can strike these lower battens uh, and put a kink in it. Certainly when you're pulling high G manoeuvres or any form of friction where that might be forced to bend the batten, it's going to misshape. That will affect your wing. So certainly worth inspecting, making sure there are no kinks in the battens. Again, if you'd already done a batten profile, you would have picked that up already. Then inserting these, again, I work in from the root. Make sure you've got the tip in the right direction. Locate the lower batten pockets. Following the same pattern. And just sl gently sliding them home. Now we're ready to pull on the tension on the wing. Now most flex wings follow a very, very similar uh, design. They're pulling back on the floating cross tube where there are two steel wires and there will be a, a keyway latch that will fit over uh, the buckle. What we need to do is pull back on these static lines here until we feel the tension. And you can see that I've spread my legs around so that we're pushing against more on the A-frame as opposed to having them on the center and causing a bend in the main base tube. So I'm gently pulling back on this. Again, feeling for any restrictions. And it does take a little bit of effort. You can feel the tension building in the wing. And eventually, there comes the over center catch. Now, it's worth looking just to make sure that those two wires aren't crossed over. You want to make sure that they are either side of the king post. So looking down, I can see that this buckle needs to go this way. Once it's over, I can now release the tension and this bungee will pull that rope back. I've already saved my nappy pin, which is here. This is a very good time to put it on. Last thing we want is that to be pinging. So again, Going through the safety, setting the safety pin, your now wing is now under full tension and secure. We leave this band pocket over open so when we're doing our final wing checks, we're able to inspect all of the portions that we need to inspect. Right, so what we need to do now is assess the wind conditions and what's going on with the wind. And certainly, is it too windy in order to fly anyway? We're about to lift the wing, and therefore the wing now under tension means that it can produce lift. It certainly can act as a, uh, as a, as a kite and, and, and blow over. That's the last thing that we want to do. So certainly we're assessing the wind state and condition uh, before we lift in the wing. Uh, what I'm gonna do is, first of all, lift the wing up so we can bring the A-frame to take the weight and then push the uh, uh, wing back so that we can connect the nose wires. Most of them offer a, sim a simple hook and pit pin operation. So it hooks on, using your thumb to provide some tension, and slide through the pit pin. You can also then put on the pit pin retaining washer so that the nose wires are now secure. We need to lower this wing down now so that we can connect the tri.
Now when bringing the trike in, just be mindful of wires, uh, cables and poles so that you don't trip over it. But we want to be bringing the trike unit in nice and square, lining the main pylon up with the main hang bracket. If this is off to one side, just straighten it out, making sure it's clear for the main pylon to come in. Once we're in, um, not fully engaged, but certainly lined up, we want to find our main hang bolt. Lining up the holes. And attaching the special nut. Now you certainly don't need tools in order to connect this and I certainly wouldn't recommend nipping it up with any form of spanner. Once it's nice and tight, align the retaining strap and nappy pin with the special nut and just make sure it's secure. You can then go ahead and look at connecting any second areas. So on this scenario there is an aerial connection and also a camera system. So I've already positioned the propeller in a Y position so that the keel tube of the wing it offers uh, no restrictions or obstructions. I'm going to be lifting the wing gently, allowing the trike unit to roll back under the wing. Once I can get a sight on the rear keel and rear fin, I just want to make sure that it's dropping down nice and gently into its squat position and I aren't putting any undue tension. If the wheel does start to move, just gently bring it backwards and forwards just to reposition that wheel. So we're almost ready now to lift our wing. So we need to do a little bit of preparation so that once we get that wing up there, everything um, is in order uh, and we don't have to come back and redo some things. The main thing that most people forget or I forget is to put on the nose cone. It's much easier to put the nose cone on now than when it's rigged. So it's be folded in half, open up, and you can see there are portions of Velcro. Put the rear portions on first of all. And I'll allow this to come around. Which is very easily Velcro in place. That's the nose cone. The next thing we need to do is secure the front strut. Now you'll see on most that there is an indent that is now on this front strut. We have the end with the two pins where it goes on the cabin end and this end goes on the pylon end. So if this is the pylon, it will be positioned this way. So we'll go fit this. Now I always carry a number of consumable parts, is that the right way? One of which are these tangs. I must have lost thousands of these, particularly rigging on grass. So I always have four or five in my pocket uh, whenever I'm out uh, flex wing. So the front strut is ready. Mind the flying wires. I'm now setting the parking brake. When I push and lift on the wing, we don't want the trike to be moving away. And the other thing I want to make sure I've got is the over center catch. Okay, what you just see me do is lift the wing, pushing the pylon back into its uh, main receiver, lining up the front strut and sliding down the external tube. And then to make the wing safe, I brought the wing back and locked it in place 
with the rear seat belt. What I now need to do is use the over center catch. You can see that this is marked top, uh, clues in the name. We're going to put the over center catch in place and start securing this trike. So the over center catch should line up. A little bit of light pressure on the pylon just generates a bit more space. Now at this point, don't bring on the tension. What we can do is now insert our front strut pins, remove the tangs, front and back, so the first one goes in, line up the holes, secured with the tangs. Check. And now we can pull down on the over center catch, ensuring that it's locked in place, that the top, it says top, we have the washers either side if yours has washers and now the trike is secure. At this point should I have any second areas like a compass I can now go put the compass back in place so that I don't lose it. I certainly have my key which I'm not going to put in yet, last thing we want to do is touch the starter whilst we're doing this and I'm now going to make the aircraft even more safe just by securing that wing further back offering more negative angle of attack. I'm still now in a nose into wind position. I need to set the aircraft so that we can park the aircraft. So I've released the brakes, I've disconnected the rear seat belt from the base bar, and I'm now gonna put this in a wing down situation. So with a slight angle into wind, push the trike back. This means now that I can walk down the wing to where the washout rods are without losing control of the wing and secure the washout rods. And there we have it. We now have our aircraft in a rigged condition. We are parked safe with the wing down into wind and I can now go through my remaining pre-flight daily inspection checks of both trike, wing and engine. Things to remember that most people forget, nose cone. I see it more times than enough, washout rods, easily enough. And finally, the over center catch that brings the tension on the rear fin. So there are a number of things to look out for. Study your pilot operating handbook. It really will give you as much information as you possibly need, but it can't beat experience. So certainly practice rigging and de-rigging your wing if you have never done it before, seek the advice of a qualified pilot or certainly an instructor who will be more than helpful uh, in showing you how to do it with your specific machine. But again, as with any form of flying, uh, experience uh, really does pay dividends. You don't want to be doing uh, uh, certainly a de-rig or a rig in anger and rushing to get into the air. So practice makes perfect and enjoy flying your flex wing.